Hey, this is H1, and we're about to be running it back with another episode. What are we going to be talking about today, H1? Well, we know it's going to be chess related, but it's going to be about H1's life right now. If you remember, all the way back to the first season on the first episode, I talked about my big brother P Money. And P Money, he did not want me to win at all. So, I might as well finish that story on a good note of when I won, when I started to actually be a competitor for my big brother, when I was at the peak of my gameplay. So stay tuned as H1 is going to deliver all of that. And not only that, I want you to stay tuned. Make sure that you follow. Make sure you not only follow this podcast, but follow my Instagram, my my Facebook, and my YouTube channel. It's Chess Knowledge with H1 or H1 Chess for Instagram. Those are my social media. So if you can't get enough here on Spotify or Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast that you're on right now listening to this, you can go on those social medias to keep in contact with me personally because i'm posting every day baby i'm posting every day (laughs) let's get on to the next segment i congratulate you for sticking up with me and i appreciate every single one of you wherever you are h1 appreciates you you kind person okay you're being too nice let's get it Hey, this is Chess Knowledge with H1, and the sponsor of today is Anchor. You know what? Have you ever wondered, man, I just want to talk and talk, and I want people to listen to me, and I don't even know where to start. Well, H1 would suggest Anchor. First of all, it's free. They have their own creation tools so that you can record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And now they have this like new feature where you can add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. And plus, one of my favorite features, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so you can hear yourself on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or many more stations. And then, plus, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum leader. What is it? What's the word? Listenership. Yeah, I almost messed that up. Okay. And then it makes everything simple for you since everything is in one place. So this is the thing. If you want to start your podcast right now, Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get it started. Anchor.fm to get started. Thank you for listening, guys. H1 out. As H1, I'm going to tell you the setting, the when, where, how, who, why. I'm going to tell you all those things in this story. So just just be patient with me. If I can't bring it out fast enough, just hold up. Just be patient with me. You know, patience is a good attribute to playing chess because sometimes you need you need to be patient for an attack. No, nah, I'm just playing. Let's get to it. So when I was playing chess... Like in the first episode, it, and if you don't know this story from the first episode, you need to watch that first episode first on that first season before you come here. But anyway, I was playing my brother P Money for a whole year, and I couldn't get one win off. He would always just destroy me. He didn't. <sighs> it's it's so hard to explain it. He always demoralized all my pieces. My pieces were were captured. They were in his hand and he would gel them on the side of the board and then he would checkmate my king and then he would ask if you want to play again. And at this time, let me remind you, let me remind you that I was in fifth grade when I started playing chess and he, he, I didn't have anybody else to play. So I played him and he beat me a lot of times. That whole first year of me playing chess, I could never beat my big bro. P money he was awesome and he he was the person that I was trying to get ahead since 
I was playing him all the time. Even though he was my big bro, my whole intention was to beat him, was to win finally and show him that I can be the best of chess, that I can beat him, that we should compete competitively and that he should not be slacking on his chess because I'm going to be coming for him. He didn't want none of this, none of this H1 little guy, okay? This fire, I was going to bring to him on that chessboard one of these days. And the day did come. The day did come. I remember correctly. The day, it was nighttime, so it must have been like 7 o'clock or something, or 8 o'clock. It was nighttime. And P Money, he was around, and I was this young kid. I was in sixth grade at this, starting this time. Okay. And I asked him, hey, you want to play some games? It was just like a regular day. And he was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I like to play the game. Yeah. Let's, let's sure. And I was like, no, we're going to play chess. And he was like, yeah, yeah, let's play chess. It was at nighttime. I don't know what he was doing. We mind our own business. We was all in the same household at, at this time. But anyway, we played this chess game. We got through the first game. We played the first game. We sat down. I was the white pieces. He was the black pieces. And I did my double feet and kettle like always. That double feet and kettle got me out of a lot of stuff. And before this game, I can tell you that before this game, I was practicing every single day. Chess tactics on my PS2, on Chess Master. I was looking at games. I was in tournaments. I was I was halfway a teacher because I was teaching people chess at this time, too. When I hit sixth grade, I was doing all these things. I was digging myself into chess openings and chess middle games and patterns. And I knew how to do all the checkmates. And I knew it all in a complete form as a sixth grader. It just took me one year. It took me a while because I didn't have that sufficient training. But I still learned how to. Um, how to do a lot of new stuff in chess. So I was noticing when we played the first game, I was doing moves. I wasn't blundering. It wasn't like the rest of the games before that. I didn't blunder any of my pieces normally. I didn't go into a check. I was actually looking at the moves ahead of time. I knew what moves P Money was going for. And, and, it, it, it was just special because we actually got into the end game. And it was a long stretch end game. We was actually um, on the clock too. So we was doing our moves, hitting the clock, doing our moves, hitting the clock. And I got my first win. And I looked at my big brother's face and I told him, checkmate. And he was surprised. He was super surprised that I won. And I saw it on his face that I won and that he didn't, like, give me the game. Is that he was surprised. His face showed it all. He, uh, his face was, like, stunned looking. And that's how I knew. I was like, yes, I finally got a legitimate win after a year of training. So special. Yes, I finally did it. And then he was like, you want to play another one? I was like, yeah, sure. We can play another chess game. We played another chess game. We was on the clock. We played another chess game. Played a a few more moves. Bow, bow, doing the moves. I did my double fee and kettle again. He was doing his regular moves. But this time, I was black and he was white. We would always switch up the board the second the second game and we would always switch up the board after each game and we had the clock on we did a move hit the clock did a move hit the clock we got it to the middle game and I think he got startled from the first game usually when somebody lose the first game right and this happens in tournaments all the time and even grandmaster tournaments when you somebody lose their first game they kind of get startled. They kind of get more cautious in the next few games. Not even more cautious, too. They get um, distracted. Because when you lose a game, it's, it's a hurtful feeling. 
And I can just imagine how my big brother felt losing to a sixth grader if he was actually playing like his hardest. And I and so the emotions was up and me personally, I didn't know if I can even win the second game. I thought still as a young kid that that first game was a fluke, that he was not playing seriously. He wasn't going all in. And I must have just I must have just, I just um, just got lucky. And as H1, that's what I believed in. Until we played the second game. I didn't blunder that much. I wasn't giving away pieces. I didn't fall into any tactics. I had my strategy right. We got into the end game, played a couple moves, won the second game. And I was excited. I was like, yeah, yeah, I won the second game. Yes, I did it. And it was getting nighttime. It was about like 8.30, 9 o'clock because we was playing where we was playing. We had this house. We had the window behind it. We was playing right in the front door. And he was like, okay, cool. You won the second game. Let's play one more time. And he was serious this time. It was when my big brother is serious, he has his face. And you know how when somebody's playing a video game or a fighting game or any type of video game when they're serious, when they hunch over um, on, on the controller and then they start, um, they have that pose, they, their, their back is not against the chair anymore. Yeah, that's when you know somebody's serious. And I knew from just looking at my big bro's poster, P-Money, that he was serious this time, that he was going out for blood, that he did not care that we was brothers and I was his little brother. He did not care. He was treating me this third round like a grown man. And I knew that I had to, I had to respect that. Like I had to, I had to grow up at that moment and I have to win one more time and it was intense and then we start the clock I was the black pieces the last time no I was the white pieces the last time because I was the white pieces first I was the white pieces the last time I did the double fee and cuddle and then we got to the end game one last time and it was serious it was no sound no talking it was none of that We played the last few moves in this end game. I knew that I wasn't giving away pieces. I was seeing everything. I was seeing my moves. I was calculating. I was knowing the strategy, what I was supposed to do. And I was hitting the clock at the same time. As a sixth grader, I practiced so hard, so long just to beat my big bro, P Money. I practiced. I read books. I studied hard. I learned from other people. I studied my own games. I recorded my games, went over it, played myself in my bedroom. I, I, I practiced so long for this. I'm not saying that I was a prodigy, okay? Because if I was a prodigy, I wouldn't be on this podcast right now. You would already know who H1 was. Just to, just to be a step back from that, because a prodigy is Bobby Fischer and beating grandmasters when he was a young kid, okay? But I knew... But I knew realistically as a young kid, a normal kid, all I wanted to do was beat my big bro, P Money. That's all I wanted to do. We played those last few moves. I won the last game. I did it. I looked at his face. He was happy. P Money was happy. And he looked at me. He was like, hey, Congrats on that. And then he gave me $20. I was excited. I was excited that I beat him. But at the same time, I was more excited about the $20 because as a sixth grader, that was the most money I have ever had in my whole entire life. And that is so disappointing because most of these fifth or sixth graders right now, they they, they get a whole lot of money. They get a whole lot much money. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I can't form my senses. But kids nowadays, they get a whole lot more money, okay, playing Fortnite and stuff. But as a sixth grader in my day, yes, I appreciated the $20 from my big bro, P Money. And then it just went to normal. We didn't play any more games after that. He went to sleep. I went to sleep. 
I went to sleep super happy that night because I finally got my wins off. It's like out of the whole year, all my passion was bent up inside of me. I was just holding it in and I was training for this just to beat my big bro P money. And I knew that I was getting better when I when I beat him because I, I just felt comfortable in that moment. I had that confidence to get that win off and I wasn't afraid anymore. I wasn't afraid that I was going to mess up. I wasn't afraid that I was going to just lose it. I was I was actually confident for my first time against P-Money. Now, I can tell you, I do not know what I did with that $20. I can tell you that much. I probably spent it all. We used to have a corner store. I used to walk to school. We used to have a corner store right there. And I used to love these star crunches, these chocolate star crunches. They were super good. And um, yeah, that, that $20 didn't last long. But I appreciate that chess experience. Now, what happened after that, I didn't just go on beating them. I, I'm pretty sure P Money just trained really hard to beat me again, which he did. He did beat me again. He He's a relentless person. Let me tell you another story. I was sick one day at the hospital bed. Let me explain this. I was in a hospital bed. My mom was there and my brother was there. And he said, you want to play chess? And I was like, sure. And he was playing me in chess while sick in a hospital bed. We was we was dishing out moves in a hospital bed and he would still beat me. And he would say, you want to play again? And I was like, sure, because I mean, I, I was playing chess while sick. That's how passionate I was. And it was actually pretty funny because he was like, man, you, you play chess better while you're sick. And I was like, thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. I, I feel like I do, too. Um, so, yeah, that's that's how passionate I was. And that's how relentless he was. We both wanted to win. And that's where I got that fighting spirit from. Is from my big brother first. But then it, it ran on to other things. Once. I can beat my big brother. And once I was having fun beating my big brother, I wanted to beat everybody else. Everybody above my big brother. I wanted to beat 1600 Josh Swainskin on the computer. I wanted to beat um, big high schoolers on the tournaments. I wanted to beat everybody. Everybody else. I wanted to go my whole middle school beating everybody else. But unfortunately, that did not happen. Since I stopped attending tournaments around the middle school times and I just I just got bored and just stopped playing chess. I didn't stop playing chess completely. I'll pick it up every now and then. But I didn't play as much chess as I did in high school and as um, fifth and sixth grade. But I did start teaching chess and I would go with my big brother to teach chess a lot more. Actually, Um, we would teach chess and we would play games and we will still be practicing at that time, it was kind of like we was both helping each other out because we was we was both around kind of the same level. He was always above me when I was a kid. But as I grew up a little bit more, I started seeing things a lot differently as an adult. And P Money's probably going to get on the podcast and say something different about that. We, we still we still play games sometimes and he still gets me. He still gets me sometimes, but I can I can tell you it's a hundred out of one. And yes, I don't care. I'm not gonna renege on that comment. Just look at our lead chess games, P Money. Just look at our lead chess games, P Money. Oh man, we're still competing. We're like we're super old now, but we we still like competing. We still like the competition, and that's where I get my arrogant competition from and just I just I guess that's where I get my humiliation tactics w- with my opponents when I'm playing chess I just want to beat them as soon as possible or if I don't beat them take all their pieces or just make sure that they have no other hope when I'm playing chess I don't know but I was super glad when I was <laughs> back to where I was getting at I was super glad when I was in sixth grade and I beat my brother P money. Okay? I was I was happy. I was a happy kid. My mama knew I was a happy kid too. 
she didn't know what happened, but I, I, because I didn't advertise it to the whole family, I knew manners. I was respectful to adults, even though I beat them. I knew I couldn't do it every time, but I kept on practicing. I kept on trying to be better and I kept on chasing after more goals in my chess journey. This is the Chess History segment. Chess History by H1. And we're going to be talking about Mikhail Tal. Mikhail Tal became a grandmaster in 1957 and world champion in 1960 to 1961. He was born on November 9, 1936 and died on June 28, 1992. His country that he lived in was the Soviet Union, Latvia. If I butchered that, I'm sorry. That's the end of the chess history segment. Yeah, as H1, I was thinking about just leaving it like that. But I wanted to end this off with some advice for younger people and for people that just they can't go above that wall or they can't reach that that limit of just surpassing um, what you're capable of. And it's that's, <laughs> that's kind of funny. I don't know why, why, why I was doing this. While I was talking, I was thinking about Goku and has, as he surpassed all his limits in Goku's anime, um, Dragon Ball Z, as he surpassed all his limits, he went to Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan God, and to, now he's doing Ultra Instinct. And is th- that's what you're supposed to do. That's how confident you're supposed to be. Basically, in every underdog movie, that's how confident you're supposed to be. Just, just watch Rocky. You can surpass your limits. You can beat that person that you've been you have been defeated by every single time you can do that all these athletes all these people that um get into these um high class universities everybody has struggled with something you will not find one person that doesn't have a story that doesn't have a story of just doing the best that they can and then reach what they can like all these millionaires and all these just in real life you can do it if you take the time to do so yes it's going to be hard work if you have that one person that you can't beat in chess because they've been playing chess longer than you if you really want to beat them you got to do the work it's going to take a while it's going to take a long time but if you're really determined to do it you can do it and yes this is becoming an inspirational segment but i don't care you can do whatever you put your mind to I'm not trying to be corny, but that has some truth to it. It has a lot of truth to it, but I'm not saying you can be the world champion, but you know what I mean? It has some limits, just depending on how crazy you are about the subject. If you have that hurdle that you cannot get over, you have to set steps to get over it. If you're trying to be successful in a sport or an instrument or just in life if you're trying to be successful in life you got to set smaller steps and then once you reach those smaller steps keep on setting steps ahead of you keep on setting smaller goals and then once you hit those smaller goals then you're going to hit those big goals that you want to do and then once you hit those big goals it just doesn't stop there just never be content with what you can do always strive for greatness always strive for goodness Um, I just know from my experience playing my um, big real P money as a fifth grader, I know it might seem like, well, he was young and he had a lot of time to do that while he was a kid and blah, 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 blah. No, that is not. No, don't don't think like that. That's negative thinking. If you're a negative thinker, you need to stop that. That's not that's just excuses. Okay, 
Everybody has time for everything. It's just matters on what you want to put your time towards. And then you got to think about the consequences too. I know that I'm a family man and I know how hard it is to have kids and whatever, deal deal with that. I, I know it, but I'm still able to somehow juggle it to do this podcast, which I, I really like doing this. I, I really enjoy it. That's why I'm continuing to do this, which I will. H1 is going to continue doing this no matter what happens. That's why you need to follow this and make sure that you follow my social media because I'm going to do this as much as I can because I love doing this. This, this is where I want to put my time towards. And I have a supportive wife that, and that helps me with this too. So I just want to say now that there's no excuses for anything. Do what you want to do. Be creative. You don't, you don't have to have the same mindset as everybody else. Be different do you be true to yourself don't shy because people don't agree with it just do you don't just do you i i remember just vividly all those nights that i was studying and i was reading and i was juggling schoolwork too then i come home and study some more but then i gotta get homework done and i gotta get my gpa up and it, it was busy still and then my mom was worried about me being on a game too much. And then I show her, hey, I'm doing chess. And she's like, OK, that's fine. And that was a good just to tell you, that was a good leeway. My mom couldn't punish me with nothing because all I needed was a chessboard to keep me entertained. So I was. Yeah, I, I know my mom had trouble with that. Like, you can't just tell your kid, hey, stop playing chess. Stop playing a game that makes you smarter. It's like, dude, what are you, what are you talking about? That's like telling a kid, stop reading books like you're gonna stop me from reading books you're gonna stop me from learning from being the best i want to be and just knowing a lot you can't do that chess is the same way you can't stop a kid from playing chess so i never got disciplined that way like in my room i never had a computer or tv when i was growing up so and all i had was chess books and a chess board and that's what i did to entertain myself i remember all those nights doing that and i studied hard and a lot of people um, as I got in middle school and older and as I was going with um, my big bro um, P money in middle school, a lot of people were like questioning why I was better, why I was better than their kid. Because I studied, I put the work in. And that's what you're supposed to do. And that's a life lesson, too. And that's why I love chess, because it can it can stay in the game. Or if you want it to be a life lesson, you can make it a life lesson, too. So if you're having troubles with with your chess career, I guess this is towards people in real life. This is towards people that's trying to make chess a career and try to go into tournaments and trying to better themselves. And I guess this is for novice players, too. That's just that just wants to be a schoolmate or a friend or a brother or sister or just an older fellow, <laughs> a older fellow. I, this advice is for all of you. And I hope that you take it in and just make sure that you tell them that I got this advice from H1 <laughs> because that would really help out this episode and this, um, this good information on this podcast. So I just want to say, yeah, just, just taking that chess knowledge right there and that advice. Okay. As H1, I do want to say thanks for making it this far. Thanks for listening. Thanks for giving me your ear for a second and make and having me talk into it. Thank you for all of that. Okay. And if you made it this far, please follow. Please share with your friends and family. And if you have any questions, please free. (laughs) If you have any questions, please feel free to message me. Okay. I'm not a private person. It's not a, it's, it's, we're, we're a family. Okay. If you're listening to this right now, and if you came back 
especially from the first season, you know more about me than a whole lot of other people. And chess is a big thing in my life. It's like it's a big chunk of my life. So if you with me right now and you're listening, you're a fam. You're the H1 fam. So just be prepared for the next episode to run it back with some more chess knowledge. And the next episode is going to be pretty cool, too. I think we're going to be talking about the fighting spirit of chess. So stay tuned. I feel that it's going to be great. Let's get to it with some more chess knowledge. Peace.